once again, I thought this was well done. And I might be reaching. I thought maybe this was possibly a hint that, you know, what if all four seasons were supposedly a dream, you know? Um, the selfish part of me wanted to see some more type of a closure, like maybe um, show, you know, uh, Ern and Van move to, uh, move to LA, Ern, Van and their, and their daughter, you know, move to LA. Hey, what's going on, folks? Another episode of Ryan Reviews Everything, and that's a wrap when it comes to Atlanta. Uh, the finale just ended. Um, overall, I thought the show was great. Did I see a few episodes that I thought were a little disappointing? Yeah, if I'm being honest. But overall, I thought it was a, a great show. Um, I really enjoyed the finale. Um, there's a selfish part of me that wanted to see some more closure with certain things instead of this whole dream sequence thing but anyway let's get into it man um yeah man i you know so i'm not gonna do like a scene by scene recap and all that let's just talk about some of the main highlights uh, we definitely start off with our three main characters Ern, al and and darius they're all you know chop chopping it up in the house somewhere and Ern and, and al end up having to go to uh Meet up with Van to go see, uh, go check out this black owned sushi restaurant, which I thought was a cool idea. And the reason why I find it funny, because when I was uh, in Newport News for a short period of time, there actually was a, um, a black owned restaurant that was open um, at this mall down the street from me. Um, I might be butchered the name, I think it was called Imponos or Infomonos, something like that, but it was a black owned sushi restaurant and unfortunately, didn't last that long. Um, definitely an open seat when everyone in there. So it kind of brought back flashback to my Newport, uh, Newport News days. But anyway, <clears throat> Darius has to go meet up with him later because he's like, I got my uh, sensory deprivation session to go. And just so many wild moments. Uh, once I, once I, I knew that's where the story was going, I figured like, okay, I'm not gonna know I'm really not gonna know what's real and what's 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 a dream. You know, you really have that hard time of deciphering between reality and and um, what's what's uh, fake. So I knew we was gonna get some type of a lot of fake outs, and that's definitely what we got in this episode. Um, even from when he goes to the drugstore to pick up medicine for what we later find out is his brother. Um, we see uh, we have a, a, a cameo uh, appearance from Cree Summer, who stays busy. Um, yes, not only did she do a different world, but I'm sure at some point she probably played the voice of your favorite cartoon character, Elmira from Tiny Toons to Storm from the X Men animated uh, series. So her list is long. So it was dope to see her in there. You know, they have a small talk about sensory deprivation and all this type of stuff and. It was a cool cameo, but, but yeah, man, uh, you really just didn't know what was real or what's not. Um, and it, it really faked me out. Like the, his whole thing, walking towards the uh, session and running into his home girl by the name of London, which was a hilarious, uh, geez, geez, Louise, that was hilarious. Uh, you know, so, so that was just wild in, in general. Like, you realize, even though that was part of the fantasy or the, you know, this this thing that was fake, you definitely realize why you don't hang out with certain people anymore. And luckily, that was, you know, not reality. But but you definitely can see why. You know, he gets into the car with this old friend that that he used to be cool with. No, mm, pardon me, uh, old friend that she used he used to be cool with. Next thing you know. You know, she's been microdosing all day while they driving. Uh, you know, water bottle filled with vodka instead of water. She, they, they both smoking while they driving, and of course they get pulled over by the police. And um, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, you know, I figured it was uh wasn't real once um 
the cop was like, you know, is that, you know, vodka in the water bottle? And she's like, of course it's not vodka anymore. If it was, if it was vodka, would I be able to do this? And she just kills the whole um, water bottle. I was like, okay, yeah, this definitely got to be fake because hot damn, you know, just taking vodka to the head like that straight. That's, that's, that's wild. That is crazy. So that was funny to see. And then after they, they survived that, she steals the gun, hits a pedestrian and then runs to leave Darius for the blame. So of course you definitely knew that was, was the case. And then on the other hand, you know, when they go back and forth, you got the, uh, you know, urn van and, and paper boy, you know, at back at the restaurant and you know, they're, they're really uh, kind of disappointed with the service. They, like the appetizers and all the other food was, was nasty. It just wasn't hidden. And then didn't have the best location in the first place. They're located right across from Popeye's, which of course is tempting everybody at the table at that point. And when I say everybody, I literally mean it's just Earn, Van, and Paperboy in the building um, as, as patrons. So that was just a tease the whole their whole visit there. Um, as a matter of fact, just sticking with that scene until we go back to uh, Darius, you know, it's, it was just funny to see, like, you know, like, sad, but, you know, it's funny, but sad. Like, how, you know, if, if certain cultures try to dabble in certain things, you know, you really don't trust them like that. And, I, and that was clearly the message when it came to that. I mean, granted, they, they, they felt like the food was nasty to begin with. They got turned off with the uh, sushi chef making their food with their bare hands. Um, they said like the, the, the raw, the raw fish was room temperature, all types of scary complaints. And then of course, when the, uh, blowfish cheek comes out, which is supposedly, uh, poisonous, I wouldn't know cause I never tasted it. Um, uh, but yeah, so they get, they get served the blowfish cheek and that's when they had enough. It's just like, hell nah, I can't do it. And, um. I'm, I'm not trying to eat anything poisonous anyway. I don't care how, how, you know, professional the, uh, the chef is. If once you put poisonous in the front of whatever the food is, I, I'm not trusting my life or my health to some chef that I just met or that, that is just serving me that day. You know, it's one thing like when you mess up somebody's order at like a McDonald's or something like that. But if you don't cook this poisonous blowfish cheek right, now nah, I gotta fuck around and get, you know, and, and, you know, suffer some, you know, being poisoned from eating this. Nah, I'm good, I'm good. So I don't blame them for wanting to leave after that. They want to leave and go straight to the Popeyes. And that part was hilarious. You got the daggone, um, you know, you, you know this, this Muslim dude come out of nowhere and is, kind of giving them a guilt trip or why they want to go to the Popeyes across the street and pointing out great points about, hey, you know, when a black man from Alabama wants to run a restaurant, oh, y'all don't want to believe in me and all that type of stuff. But y'all eat, you know, uh, you know, y'all eat um, Popeyes chicken or, or I think he even brought up Angel Mama's or whatever the case is. And like, Angel Mama's not even made by a black person. It's actually made from like, Italians or something like that, but but y'all trust that, but y'all can't trust me. If y'all do, go ahead and eat the blowfish cheek. And you know, it was funny at first, but you know, just like most Atlanta episodes, have some type of truth that it hits you with, and it's just like, well, damn, that is kind of true. You know, even like the whole point when he's talking about, hey, you know, you know, black people just don't trust each other. It's always, oh, don't trust those folks, don't trust those black folks in New York. They always down to hit a lick. Oh, those my net Miami niggas treat you dirty. These, you know, West Coast, whatever the case is, it was just pointing out how black people have a hard time trusting each other in certain situations. I do think that's sad, but true. But anyway, he goes to that righteous, you know, guilt trip type of um, speech. And shit kind of got weird when he was like, yo, lock the doors. And of course, that's what Darius saves today. Um... I thought this was a perfect way to um, to end uh, Atlanta uh, for a number of reasons, um, and I'm all over the place. Let me just rewind a little bit. I really enjoyed how there was at one point um, I picked up where um, Darius was like, you know, I do the sensory deprivation every week, and then I'm assuming he does this every week because 
he gets to see his deceased brother. Um, that's what I took from it. He picks up the, uh, the picture frame and so talks about how much he misses him. This and the third. So that's clearly why he does it every week to see his brother. I thought that was a, a heavy scene, a dope scene. But um, overall, man, like I really enjoyed that final episode. You really couldn't tell what was real and what was fake, especially how it ended. You know, it ended with um, him trying to look for the uh, hint indicator that he's in the uh, dream or reality. And as he said earlier, he knows he's in a dream when he sees the thick Judge Judy. Judge Judy comes from behind her, you know, her judge, uh, you know, place where she just, you know, come, come behind the little big podium. And when she steps down, if she's thick, he knows he's still in that sensory deprivation thing. If it's just regular old Judge Judy, it's reality. But, of course, they cut away from it um, at the last minute, so you really couldn't tell if uh, it was reality or not. Um, once again, I thought this was well done. And I might be reaching. I thought maybe this was possibly a hint that, you know, what if all four seasons were supposedly a dream, you know? Um, the selfish part of me wanted to see some more type of a closure, like maybe um, show, you know, uh, Ern and Van move to uh, move to L. Ern Van and their and their daughter, you know, move to L. A. Um, you know, show I don't know, Paperboy becoming even more successful in his rap career. I don't know. Um, I thought they were just going to like wrap up some. Um, well, there was there really wasn't any loose ends like that, but I just thought it was just going to try to give like a, a conclusion to some of these um, characters, but. I've talked long enough, man. Uh, once again, I think this was overall a dope show. Um, and there's nothing but be bigger and better things to come for all four of those actors. Um, they already have been in a lot of great projects as is. So I'm looking forward to seeing what each of them will bring to the table uh, moving forward. So love it or hate it, folks. That's just my review. Peace.